Okay. I wanted to shoot a video today. Actually, this is the second video. I shot a video when I was kind of on vacation shooting footage for my other channels and stuff. And when you're driving in a car for four, five, six hours at a crack, a lot of stuff comes to mind. You get, you get thinking about a lot of stuff. I made a video while I was on the road about this and then I decided that this part of it was much more important than the rest of the video. I'll still probably do something with the rest of that video and put that up, but this is way more important. If you're interested in what I'm doing over at the other channel, it is at Life Reboot project. I have a, a website at .com. I have a Facebook page and Instagram is a big place to find me at Life Reboot Project. Or eventually I'll get a YouTube channel going at Kevin Katzenberg and you can find video footage of what I do with that other stuff over there. Let's roll the intro and let's get into this video. It's all about front end connection and push points. And I think this is really interesting. And I'm not fully sealed on this thing yet. I'd like to hear some feedback and kind of if everybody's kind of thinking about this or where this is. I've spent the last 30 plus years working on race cars, building race cars, and racing cars. And I'm here to help you better understand racing technology. Okay, the first part of this video deals with anti-dive and if you know what anti-dive is if you take your lower control arm pickup points and you draw a line through them they'll probably either go to the back or towards the front most of the time they go towards the back and you'll string that all the way back and then when you put anti-dive in your car you'll put your front your upper control arm there at an angle angling towards your back and that'll be anti-dive. Um, most cars have just a little bit. If you measure upper control arms it's usually like between a quarter and a half inch difference. It's not much. But if you draw a line all the way through those upper control arm pickup points where they connect to the chassis and you draw a line through the lower control arm pickup points where they connect to the chassis, both those lines will intersect at a point. And I call that the force leverage point for like anti-dive or anti in the front. That's a side view. Then you have a front view. And the front view, the line runs through your ball joint and then it runs down through your connection point to your upper and lower control arms. So on the lower you'd have your ball joint and then it would run through and then run through your lower control arm um, point where it connects to your chassis. And then the upper ball joint would connect and then that would run a line down through. And where those two points intersect, that is your force connection point or diversion point in the front. Now traditionally when you found your front roll center, you do those for both sides. And then you draw a line through there and where it goes to the center of your tire contact patch. And you draw another line through both sides and where those two lines cross is was always traditionally considered a front roll center. 
but I don't worry too much about front row centers. I think these force connection points are much more important. So you get your ball joint and your upper control arm draw line, your lower ball joint and control arm draw line connection point is here. And then it's interesting to find out what we're going to do with this next thing. Now the next part of this, if you take and you draw a line and you picture like if these two points that you did the side view for the anti-dive and the front view, you'll notice that they'll all form like a triangle. And what if you take and you run like an imaginary bar through those two force points, it'll go at a diagonal to your right front tire. Well, I believe that that bar that you run through those points is your force bar. Think about pushing on that bar. When your chassis pushes forward, it is pushing your front tires on that bar, technically. There's other things going on there, but let's just get real general so we can see things. It's pushing on that bar, and then you have one for both sides. So you have a left and you have a right bar, and you're pushing on this bar now. I'm going to do a bunch of diagrams I have written up and showing up for this, and we're going to, we'll go through them on the drawing board to just make them more clear. But now picture yourself standing inside your car and you are pushing on your front end with both of these front bars. Now if your right front, let's say this is your right front, is lower then your spindle height or where your tire connects to this thing, if it's lower, it will actually try to push down on the front end towards the right front. If your left front is higher, I believe that when you're pushing on it, it actually tries to roll the chassis or push down on the left front. Um, tire as you're actually rolling the chassis around. So I believe that it is important to have the connection point on the left front, that bar above the spindle center line. So as your weight is coming off your left front, you still have a kinematic force pushing down on your tire. I'm not a real big fan of chaining up these left fronts. There's got to be a better way to plant that left front tire, drive that thing in the ground as your car is rolling and trying to take weight off that left front tire. The more we can get that left front tire to dig as the car is rolling out of the right front, the less aero push problems and the problems we're going to have when you get behind other cars. We have to start putting traction back in that left front as the car rolls out of it. There's also something to do with the rear of the car and I think that is also important. And I'm going to go through that in the other videos. But I thought that this concept, and I had never seen anything explained like this before. That's why I'd like a little bit of feedback and to see if it kind of jives with everybody. It just, if you kind of picture it, it kind of makes sense. And the way I always do things when I try to run through them in my mind on what's going down there is to exaggerate it. On the right front, pretend like that pickup point is down at the ground and you're trying to drive that chassis in below 
the center line of your spindle. You're trying to drive it down in there. If your spindle, if you think of everything runs in a circle, I have a video about that too. The further you get out from your spindle center line to where this bar pushes, the more leverage it has and the harder it pushes down into the right front. It'll help roll your car down into the right front. On the left front, when you have your spindle center line, the higher that that connection point is above the spindle connection, above the spindle connection point, if that bar is above where the spindle runs through the center of your tire, it creates a leverage and actually pushes down on your tire through those connections. So let's go over to the drawing board. I'm going to try to explain to it with a bunch of drawings I have to see if it's clear, if anybody has anything that they'd like to add. Um, shoot them in the comments and we'll talk about it a little bit and discuss it. Like I said, I've never seen anybody talk about this stuff before. When Darren Miller was kind of helping us out at Wild. He always liked to run his control arms at a certain dynamic, like the car was rocked up on the right front. But then now I think about it, and the way he rocked that car up, he probably, maybe he knew about it, or maybe he did it on instinct. But when he rocked that car up, it did the same thing that I'm talking about here. And it actually brought that uh, left front up with a flattened left front control arm. And it brought that right front down underneath the spindle line with a upper control arm at a really big angle. So let's go over to the drawing board and we'll check out these diagrams. Okay, the first part I wanted to go through here is the anti-dive connection point. Now usually anti-dive is associated with braking and the brake torque actually pushes down or up on the tire when you hit the brakes. But I'm thinking there's more to it than just that. So if you draw a line through your upper control arm points where they touch the chassis and you draw them down, uh, this would be anti-dive. And then you draw, uh, through your connection points, you draw another line, and this is your lower control arm front connection point, and then you're basically in the center of your tire Sometimes if you do a reverse strut, it's back here. Modifieds are back here. But this is just a general configuration. So you draw a line. The force connection point, or the anti-dive point, is this point over here, where they both intersect. So that will be your side view force connection point. Next, you have your front view uh, force connection point. This is usually the starting point to traditionally finding your roll center. So what you do is through your upper ball joint and where your upper control arm connect to the chassis, you run a line through it. And then you have your lower ball joint and where your lower connect, your lower control arm connect to your chassis and you run a line through it. Where those two intersect is your what I consider your force connection point. Now if you take it one step further and you want to find your roll center, you draw another line down through from there to the center of your tire and you'll get a diagonal line. You do your other side just like this side, this would probably be the left or the right front from a front view. And then you do your left side over here, 
And where those two points come together traditionally, as everyone is taught, that is your roll center. Now there's different variations from that. And I, like, when I talk about a roll center now, I talk about either a force based roll center, like I'm talking about here, or you do a actual elastic roll center that kind of runs through the springs. And that's all in my book. You can check that out. But this is your force connection point in the front here. But now let's say that both of these force connection points for the front and for the side view is as like a rod end or a hole through it. And you take a big long bar and you push through there and that is going to be your bar that you would actually push on that connects your tire to the chassis. I think that that is a leverage point. So picture your rear tires driving your car. It's going to try to push on that bar and either drive your right front down or up as it is in relationship to your left front or where the relationship falls in regards to the center of your spindle. I have another drawing we'll look at. But just for reference, these would be your upper control arm pickup points. These would be your lower, so you can see the two lines drawn through there, and your imaginary bar running through those two lines. So now when you're all said and done, you're doing both sides, you'll have kind of like this from the top view. Now these are going to be probably quite a bit longer, but can just picture yourself for argument purposes sitting in your engine bay, and you have your hand, one hand here and one hand there, and you're pushing on that car or these tires through that these two points and you're pushing on it and that's actually what's going on there when your rear tires start to drive your car forward and there's more to do with that with push points and I'll get into that with the rear tires I think there's a relationship there between the rear push points and the front push points and how they drive the car up and drive the car down with attitude but just picture yourself standing here, putting one hand on each bar and pushing your tires forward. Now this is the last diagram. Now picture yourself, this is probably, you're sitting in the engine bay and you're pushing your car forward, your tires are pushing your chassis forward and you got your hand on the bar. If your bar here, I believe, is below the center line of the rotation of your spindle, it'll actually push down on the right front of your chassis and actually try to force the right front chassis onto that spring and put roll into the car. Now, I believe if this action or this force bar is actually above the center line of the spindle, it will actually try to push down on the tire because this will want to roll up. Your chassis will want to roll up and actually put a force down into your tire, which is good because your car naturally, through weight transfer, wants to roll the weight off that tire anyways. So any force we can put kinematically through drive and use our control arms to plant that left front or to get that car on the right front better, the better off we are. I think we are giving up way too much of this kinematics in the front and everybody's worrying about smash numbers and everything else. There's more to be had than just this guru smash number thing that everybody is worrying about now. Really take hold of this because I think the people that are exploring this and 
working in this mindset will actually end up being ahead of the crowd because I think the crowd will eventually get here. If you like this video and you like other videos in my stream, subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. YouTube really likes it when you subscribe and hit the like button. It it helps out my algorithm and I get more people on here and I spread the word about what I'm doing here even more. So subscribe, hit the like button, and I will see you in the next video.